Welcome to the public hearing for the State Road 405 Strategic Intermodal System, or SIS, Connector Intersection Improvements for State Road 405 or Columbia Boulevard at State Road 50, Cheney Highway, Barna Avenue, and Grissom Parkway in Brevard County, Florida. The purpose of this hearing is to receive public input and to give interested persons an opportunity to express their views concerning the location and conceptual design of the proposed improvements. FDOT staff are available to discuss the plans and answer questions. Public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information about the proposed improvements at the three listed intersections along State Road 405. This public hearing also serves as an official forum to give you the opportunity to express your opinions and concerns about this project. In November 2010, Florida Senate Bill 1842 was enacted, which requires the department to hold a public hearing whenever modifications to property access are proposed along a state highway. Hearings must be held 180 days prior to finalization of the design of the project. This public hearing is being held relative to state project numbers 436-122-1-32-01, and 436-122-1-32-03. The FDOT is designing this project to improve the level of service and capacity by adding and extending turn lanes. The project also includes drainage, access management, and traffic signal improvements. No additional right-of-way will be required. This public hearing was advertised consistent with all federal and state requirements. Letters were sent to 19 elected officials, 16 government partners, 20 agencies and businesses, two homeowner associations, and 945 property owners or stakeholders. Newspaper ads were published in the Florida Today newspaper, Brevard County Edition, on Sunday, April 15, 2018, and again on Sunday, April 22, 2018. An ad was also published in the Florida Administrative Register. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5 Office, or the Tallahassee Office. This contact information is also provided on a sign displayed near the sign-in table. This project is being conducted by FDOT District 5 in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws and pursuant to 23 United States Code Number 327 and the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding between FDOT and the Federal Highway Administration, signed on December 14, 2016, with the FDOT Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee as the approving authority. The project is located within portions of the city of Titusville and the unincorporated area outside the city limits within Brevard County. The project limits are along State Road 405 from State Road 50, Cheney Highway to Grissom Parkway. Improvements are proposed at the intersections of State Road 50, Cheney Highway, Barna Avenue, and Grissom Parkway. The intent of this project is to implement recommendations from the SIS or Strategic Intermodal System Connector Needs Assessment 
completed in May 2010, related to the Cape Canaveral Spaceport Connector. The intersection design is aimed to improve capacity and thus increase the level of service. State Road 50, Cheney Highway, at the intersection with State Road 405, is currently a four-lane divided roadway with two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction and five-foot shoulders. The eastbound approach to the State Road 405 intersection has a single left turn lane and dual right turn lanes. The westbound approach to the State Road 405 intersection has dual left turn lanes and a single free flow right turn lane. State Road 405 at this intersection is also currently a four-lane divided roadway with two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction. The northbound approach to State Road 50 Cheney Highway has dual left turn lanes and a single free flow right turn lane. The southbound approach to State Road 50 Cheney Highway has a single left turn lane and a single right turn lane. The proposed improvements for the State Road 50 Cheney Highway intersection include a second eastbound left turn lane on State Road 50 to go northbound on State Road 405. A second receiving lane will then be added to State Road 405. The free flow right turn lanes in the northbound and westbound approaches will be removed to improve safety. Curb ramps will be reconstructed and crosswalks and a median refuge will be installed for pedestrians. Sidewalk will be constructed in the northwest quadrant of the intersection. Milling and resurfacing of the pavement will be done in areas where it is necessary for the proposed improvements. Large detailed maps of each intersection are available for review in the display area. After the presentation, FDOT staff will be available in the display area to answer your questions. State Road 405 at the existing Barna Avenue intersection is a four-lane divided roadway with two 12-foot lanes in each direction and five-foot shoulders. The northbound approach is widened for a single left turn lane and a single right turn lane. Barna Avenue is currently a two-lane undivided roadway with one 12-foot travel lane in each direction. The shoulders are not paved. The westbound approach is widened for a single right turn lane onto State Road 405. Proposed improvements for the Barna Avenue intersection include a new westbound left turn lane. The shoulders on State Road 405 will be widened to five feet and paved to accommodate bicyclists. New mast arm traffic signals will be installed. Milling and resurfacing will be done in areas where it is necessary for the proposed improvements. Currently at the Grissom Parkway intersection, State Road 405 is a four lane divided roadway with two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction and five-foot paved shoulders. It is widened at the eastbound and westbound approaches to Grissom Parkway for a single left turn lane and a single right turn lane. Grissom Parkway is currently a four-lane divided roadway with two 12-foot travel lanes in each direction with curb and gutter. The northbound inside through lane becomes an exclusive left turn lane and the outside lane is striped as a shared right turn lane and through lane. Proposed improvements for the Grissom Parkway intersection include widening Grissom Parkway to create a second northbound left turn lane onto State Road 405. A second westbound left turn lane will be constructed in the existing median on State Road 405. The existing eastbound right turn lane will be extended along State Road 405. 
The shoulder on eastbound State Road 405 will be widened to accommodate bicyclists. Milling and resurfacing will be done in areas where it is necessary for the proposed improvements. Drainage improvements will include regrading the roadside swales and providing new curb inlets to collect stormwater runoff from the widened pavement. Traffic signal improvements include signing and pavement marking modifications to incorporate the proposed intersection improvements. Signal modifications and timing adjustments will also be made for the new turn lanes and pedestrian improvements. The existing pedestrian signals will be replaced. Existing signal supports will be replaced with mast arms and appropriate lane use signs will be installed. The project will also require coordination for utility relocations. There are 13 existing utilities owned by 10 utility companies within the project limits. The FDOT is coordinating with each company to minimize impacts and avoid construction delays. Emergency services coordination will include the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, Brevard County Fire Rescue Station Number 24, and the Titusville Police Department located along State Road 405. The project team will coordinate with each of the emergency responders to ensure they are aware of construction plans and schedules. The project team will also coordinate with the Brevard County Schools Transportation Services regarding bus routes. Access management is the planning and control of the location, spacing, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, and street connections to a roadway. Access management designates where and how vehicles enter and exit a roadway, helps protect public investment in roadways, and improves public safety by preserving mobility, reducing delays, and minimizing crashes. The illustration shows an accident that could have been prevented by closing the median or barrier where the westbound automobile is trying to turn into or cross the eastbound travel lane. In 2010, Section 335-199 Florida Statutes was passed requiring FDOT to notify all affected property owners, municipalities, and counties of a proposed project that will divide a state highway, erect median barriers, or close or modify an existing access to an abutting property owner at least 180 days before the design is finalized. The law requires that FDOT hold at least one public hearing in the area where the project is located and receive public input to determine how the project will affect access to adjacent properties and the potential economic impact of the project on the local business community if applicable. This is an access management project. The current access management classification is Class 3. The classification will remain the same after the proposed improvements are constructed. The median opening on State Road 405 east of Grissom Parkway will be closed to the public and remain open for authorized use only. Instead of turning left across the median opening, vehicles will need to make a U-turn at the next intersection, which is signalized. You can download a copy of the Florida Department of Transportation's Access Management brochure for more information. Go to the website at www.dot.state.fl.us and type Access Management Brochure in the search box at the upper right-hand corner of the home page. For more information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com. 
This website is the FDOT's living platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains the links to easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view the current project schedule details, project contact information, and access project files such as this presentation. Type the project number 436122-1 in the search box at the top of the page, then click on Go. When the new page opens, click on the project file name. We encourage you to share your comments with us. There are many different ways you can submit your comments. Provide your comments verbally during the public comment period following the presentation. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table. Take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. Email your comments to Eliod Joseph, FDOT Project Manager at eliod.joseph at dot.state.fl.us. Make a comment to the court reporter. Use the Ask a Question button on the CFL Roads website under the Project Manager's contact information. All comments received by May 11, 2018 will become part of the official public hearing record. After this presentation, we will collect speaker request cards from anyone wishing to make a verbal statement. It is important that we have your information on a speaker card for the public record, because it is very important for us to hear from those who wish to speak. We will not be responding to questions during the public comment period. Once the comment period is finished, project staff will be available to answer your questions. If you have questions or would like more information, you may contact Mr. Elio Joseph, FDOT Project Manager, or the Consultant Project Manager, Mr. Nick Benedico, by mail, telephone, or email. Thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to attend this public hearing. We will now call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. If you have not filled out a speaker card but you wish to speak, Please hold up your hand and a member of the project team will bring one to you. When your name is called, please come forward. Then state your name and address into the microphone. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. Again, the project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis.